everybody and welcome back to another episode of For the Love of Marketing. This is the first episode of Series 2, so great to have you back with us. Uh, we've got Martin Calvert with us today, who is an absolutely fantastically talented marketing director over at ICS Digital. We've got a huge amount of experience. We're going to be talking about international SEO today. Um, it's a huge area, one that can be a little bit complicated, that one that can throw people off a little bit. So I thought we'd have a bit of a chat around that. Um, pick Martin's brain, get all the expertise out of there and, and throw it your way. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for all future tips from a load of the different marketing experts on all things marketing. But in the meantime, let's get started. Hi, Martin, how are you doing? Hi, Simon, I'm fantastic. Thanks for that very kind introduction. I neglected <laughs> to mention I do get by on my looks predominantly, so <laughs> not that the expectation was too high about... Uh, expertise you yeah. and i are both yeah. going to compensate for something with our hair right absolutely but, um... as much as much um obscured as possible with beards and hair that that's my policy at the moment <laughs> and for anyone on audio who loves a bit of hair pop over to youtube and you can see all the hair you'd ever want to see yeah. on this on this video tips and tricks you know freely offered <laughs> an seo well, we'll focus more on SEO than on ponytails and, and the like today, I think. Uh, probably best that we do. <laughs> so um, on the subject of international SEO, um, let's start at the beginning. right? If you do SEO, right, you, you launch a website, you've naturally got some SEO before you even start doing anything. Of course, you need to build it up. But yeah, if you start doing SEO on a website, websites are global, of course they are. So that's international SEO, but it's not, right? So what is international SEO? Yeah, I mean, in, in principle, it's the discipline of being able to rank your site in multiple um, markets where you have potential customers and the ability to engage them, sell to them, bring them on board. If you're a service company, service them, all that type of thing. Um, and it's fair to say, yeah, in, in one way, I think um, search engines and Google, they do try and cover this off for you somewhat. They're They're much more intelligent now in terms of understanding, oh yeah, you've got checkout options for France. You must be able to be um, a suitable option for French customers, or you've got language um, capabilities on the site for certain uh, other markets. So, you know, Google does try and fill in the gaps for you. Um, but as we know, SEO as a discipline is not about leaving everything up to Google. Otherwise mm. we'd all be completely hands off. So <laughs> this is where we kind of apply different methodologies to try and make sure that you are um, at the top of or close to the top of the SERPs in the jurisdictions or markets that you are you're targeting. Yeah, makes makes perfect sense. I mean, the, you hit on an interesting one there, which is which is language. Um, this is this is one that I've I've had conversations with so many brands about over the years. And you say, hey, look, if we you know if we need to, if we're in France, we need to be in French. If we're in the US, we need to be in English. And yeah, it, it's it, it's an interesting subject because obviously it's not quite as simple as that. Um, you know, people can be spe speaking multiple languages in, in multiple countries, right? In, in, in the US, for example, there's plenty of people speaking Spanish. Um, Canada, of course, English and French, very common. Uh, Switzerland, English, French and German, very common. Uh, so, absolutely. Yeah, it can be hugely people. challenging. But uh, exactly. yeah, go on. Yeah, and then people have, you might, you might reside in a certain country, but they'll have their settings on social media or uh, Gmail to be their native language. You know, so targeting people by their preferred language is, is a good thing. It's also worth bearing in mind that um, it's a trust factor as well. And the language might, to, to a multilingual person, it, it might matter less when they're at the very top of the funnel, just researching something. You know, they don't really care too much. They, you know, they understand, let's say, English, French, German, and they can do their own research. But when it comes to a buying decision, you might find that's when it becomes more important when they think, okay, this company has its uh, product pages in German. I, I can probably expect that they will ship reliably to Germany. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of people do offer international shipping, for example, but, you know, is, is it definitely going to be something that's part of their business operation or is it just a little add-on here? Am I going to experience some pain doing yeah. business with this e-com brand or the service company? So I think that's kind of where the, the thing can shift. They might understand you in, let's say, English, but to buy from you, they might want the content in German. And that's something where, um, you know, I think it might have been Helmut Kohl, the former German chancellor, who said, you know, if I'm buying from you, uh, speak my language. If I'm selling to you, um, I'll use your language. Yeah. So that, that's yeah. the kind of thing that kind of comes into the consideration for sure. Yeah, it's uh, a great it's not point. It's about SEO. It's about how are people responding and trusting your site. 
Yeah, and and it's funny because the way the way SEO continues to go, as I firmly believe it should, and I've been saying for a long time, is really about um, that user experience and that trust. It's not really about trying to trick an algorithm and 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 make sure you tick a box. It's, yeah, it's, it's really that sort of EAT approach to to SEO, and and trust is of course the T in that in that acronym, and it's it's such an important area that you know building that relationship not only um, helps you, as you say, with conversion. But it helps with all the brand values. It helps with your reviews. It helps with your social media engagement. It helps with your engagement within the site. And all of these can be ranking factors as well as, as just yeah, general absolutely. help. Absolutely. So there's two really important things there. One is Google has always said really that UX should be the main thing mm-hmm. because, you know, Google doesn't want anything overly manipulative going on. They want to say, make the best site you can. And in this case, the best site you can create will be one that responds to the needs of multiple multilingual users if you do indeed work internationally um but the google's got a lot better at actually policing that now i think of the many updates last year 2022 probably 10 content released updates and a lot of that is very much focused on the amorphous term quality so it's about that wider experience it's not just like one tiny aspect of tech seo it's the totality of the experience that you're offering so that's something to bear in mind from a multilingual perspective Mm. Um, but then also the other side is, um, you mentioned EAT, and now in 2023, EAT unhelpfully um, has an extra E added <laughs> yeah. based on the latest update, which stands for experience. And people kind of have asked us, you know, what's the difference between experience and expertise in content? Um, and the kind of answer given by Google is, you know, expertise is when you have like a formal qualification, you've cited your sources, all that type of stuff. Whereas experience is you've lived something. So, you know, in e-commerce, that might be the difference between somebody who knows technically how um, the, the, the best information to detail about a new TV, HGTV, all the specs. Whereas mm-hmm. experience is I've used these many TVs and this one is my preferred one because of X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So yeah. that experience side of things comes into your approach to multilingual marketing. And yeah. SEO, like how are you showing empathy and affinity towards these international audiences? One of the things I mentioned earlier was you know, delivery, shipping, mm. payments. If you can, you know, have testimonials in the native language, talking about the seamless process that they've had, that's that's a good trust factor for the human being. But it's also seemingly what Google's looking for as well. That experience part has now been added on to the the Eat acronym. Yeah, yeah. I'm not overly keen on the extra E at the moment. We'll see how that, how that one bears out. I mean, but, I'm uh, just looking forward to people promoting it as EAT now. That, I think yeah, that would be really disruptive. Gonna be, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how that one plays out, I think, over the over the time. I think acronyms can always get longer. That's a dangerous thing. It's like in marketing where you start with the three Ps and then the five Ps. And then the yeah, and I think I've got stuff in Ps now. Yeah, <laughs> you can keep adding to it. Why not? I uh, <laughs> Think of another word beginning with P. Um, so TLDs is another interesting area, right? Top level domains is another really interesting area in in um, in international marketing. There's a good debate around you. Know, does it really matter? Um, you know, is it which which you know, do we do we focus on TLDs? Do we focus on subdomains? Which is more important? Is any of it important? I mean, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think I'm fairly, you know, I I, I, lean, I lean towards having uh, subdomains where possible because you're then consolidating all of the SEO power, so to speak, in one domain, mm. then filtering that authority down. Um, however, as I said before, I think Google's getting a lot better at figuring stuff out. So if you do have, um, you know, multiple sites, same brand, but serving different jurisdictions, different markets, hopefully Google will understand a lot of that. They can, you know, understand the context, um, you know, because Google's really want to get into the situation, as far as I understand, of penalizing people who are making business decisions. In a way, Google doesn't really want to reward people who are the best at SEO, because Google would rather, we almost did nothing deliberate in SEO beyond producing really good content and really um, UX-focused websites. Mm-hmm. But I think, I think that's something to probably reassure people a little bit. But when it comes to actually... Um, SEO factors. I'd say I'd say having a single website with subdomains for different um, markets would be the way to go because it avoids you competing with yourself. Mm-hmm. For example, if you have a, a site in uh, you know the US but also in UK, 
both English, English language. You end up potentially getting US visitors to your UK site, UK visitors to your US site. Um, and that's even more the case if, if multilingual stuff comes into it. So you might end up with, um, you know, uh, Spanish speakers in Colombia ending up on your European Spanish websites mm. when they're not going to ship to um, Colombia or, or something else. So these are the things where you need to kind of avoid competing with yourself because you're effectively doubling or tripling or quadrupling the work required rather than growing one website with a very logical structure for each market mm. or um, localization options. You're actually having to maintain multiple websites with uh, content, but then also offsite SEO, you know, links from various sources. And typically, typically what we see when people do things in that way is there'll be a couple of countries that get really neglected. Yeah. Whereas if you have a single domain, they still benefit from um, the wider authority of the whole site. Same mm. idea that a rising tide will lift all ships. Mm. Well, that can de-risk things. Um, but then getting I mean, SEO doesn't exist in a, in a vacuum. Yeah. The other side of it would be sometimes for business reasons, you must have separate websites. And that might be because of um, regulations, if it's something to do with health or perhaps law, um, finance, certainly. There could be some restrictions where it's not possible to address international audiences all on one website. There'll be business, industry, legal reasons why you can't do that. Mm. That's kind of where it's all about being as efficient as you can to make sure that you are um, maintaining all these separate websites in the right way. Mm. But um, yeah, it's not all about SEO. Sometimes for business reasons, you've got to um, go down a certain track and your yeah. agency or your consultancy partners internal teams they've got to be reactive enough to to handle yeah that's right I, I think that's spot on i mean i think there, there are scenarios as with most things in in marketing there are scenarios where most models will work one way or the other um, i think the subdomain model is a very strong one but i i, I certainly know situations with uh, a number of brands where the your separate uh, country approach can work um, in terms of separate websites, as you say, because of the business needs and the goals that they're they're trying to strive towards. But no, that's really good advice. That's awesome. Um, what about how you sort of oversee and optimize international SEO? So if you've got a you're looking at Search Console for one site, that's easy. If you're looking at you know, a subdomain with multiple um, you know, well, multiple subdomains on the yeah. domain, or you've got multiple sites, you know, how do you manage that? And, how, and you mentioned a little bit about about duplication and 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 link building and getting people from the wrong locations into your site and yeah how do you look at the full picture and make sure that this yeah I, I mean it does, it does add complexity there's, there's no two ways about it especially if you're like a retail brand with like ten thousand SKUs or products mm. you know that becomes a, a big multiplier effect i think the main thing is to kind of take advantage of the tools that are available so i think google's a bit i mean analytics um, could be getting worse, could be getting better, but I think <laughs> there's a debate. <laughs> there's, um, there, there are still some advantages to things like Tag Manager, for example. Yeah. So the, the, the better you're set up initially, um, the more equipped you'll be to measure and manage what's actually going on. So having different triggers for different actions on the site to understand the buyer journey for different sections of the site, that should also allow you to benchmark a bit more as well. Um, which, which does get tricky for international websites because one site might be performing better than another, but not because the site is any better, but because the buyer journey is different in certain, mm -hmm. members, in certain countries. Um, for example, you know, in Japan and other um, countries in, in the Far East, um, it's not unusual for people to really, really read terms and conditions in serious detail. Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. I think um, your average British person will click through as quickly as possible. They might be giving up their firstborn child to Amazon or something, but you know, <laughs> well, you want to get through it. It's so it's also, it's worth thinking about what can this data tell you about how people buy, mm. but also what can this data tell you about where to improve and how you must customize things for different markets. And yes, it can get unwieldy in, in reporting frameworks, but I think Overall, it's better to have that in one platform than have separate instances, for example, of uh, search console and analytics. So I don't think it's easy. Nothing is easy when you work at that level of scale. But hopefully the people, you know, working in that way, they'll have the bandwidth and team size 
mm. to kind of get things set up as much as possible. It's much harder to set up this type of reporting and tracking once you're already underway. It's like rebuilding a ship while you're already at sea. Mm. Um, now, of course, anything's possible. That can, that can definitely be implemented after the fact. It might, might, be, it might cause a bit of pain if you have to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think having that single point of view across multiple jurisdictions, markets, and so on, um, definitely helps having the one place, I, I would say. Although I'm, I'm sure I know people that would be, you know, I want a completely separate instance. It's cleaner. So in that way, maybe it comes to a different stroke to different folks. But I think mm. from a reporting perspective and from an internal ownership perspective, having that clarity internally is, is good, but you have to. I think there's a, there's a certain, there's a certain number of people. And I, I know some as well that would certainly like to be able to draw a clean line between the sites, but in reality, you can't, that's, that's the problem. So if you, if you try and draw a clean line, there's definitely going to be some kind of leakage between the two different sites in some cases. Yeah, you just won't be able to see it. Basically, <laughs> if, even if you do do that, you know, it's, it's worth bringing that data together in yeah. some other way. So some people use Data Studio, some people use Tableau, some people use all yeah. sorts of other uh, BI tools to really get into things. And, and that can be really helpful from a visual mm. perspective. Definitely endorse that. You know, data should be not overwhelming. It should help you. You shouldn't be thinking, oh my God, I've got this massive treasure chest of stuff that is causing me stress. Mm. It's, it's there to make your life easier. And that's kind of where some of the international um, aspects of SEO can be very, very revealing and fun. You see how different um, customers behave in different countries. You see also the search terms that are bringing people, your, your best customers. Um, and you also see, if you have the tracking in place, you can see um, the, the kind of long tail queries. You know, when people are just looking to find out about certain products or services, what are they interested in? And I think sometimes this can, it can be tempting to make very sweeping judgments or uh, statements about entire countries, which mm. is not a good thing to be doing because you're going to look at multiple audiences within multiple countries. There is no single British customer or German customer or Spanish customer. Um, but you still can take some clues about, the, about aggregate data. What will mm. benefit the most people most of the time? And I think that's kind of where you can take a lot of lessons about where should you be focusing on and getting away from what some people do, which is try and replicate a UK strategy in um, Japan or replicate mm. a Spanish strategy in uh, Central and South America. That's that's that happens an awful lot, mm. unfortunately. Um, and it doesn't give due um, attention to how people actually buy, what their priorities are. And usually it's, it's a mixture of levers, right? People are almost always interested in what they see as value based on price, based on utility, based on accessibility, based upon the immediacy to get the product or service, like what barriers are there. Yeah. But the balance between those things differs between different markets and different audiences within those markets. That's where data can help tell the story. Awesome. Yeah. And that's a great point. I think your data studio is a really powerful tool. Of course, it's, it's, I say mostly free. Uh, to use depending on what you want to do with it um yeah there's a huge amount in there and, and yeah the, I'm, I'm a firm believer that it's not the data that matters it's the insight that you draw from the data so great to have as much data as you possibly can but being able to manage that and, and ideally use tools that do it for you to to pull out the information that matters from that is what matters yeah, not yeah. having it's, it's, it's not just what, what's there, there. It's, uh, it's why it's there as well mm. and having cultural understanding as well really helps again not that having you know a complete view of how everything is done in one particular market. Cause again, there's multiple audiences, multiple customer types, but having some cultural understanding is really important. I think, um, otherwise you, you, you really are guessing a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's, it's where kind of, it's a, it's a big benefit to us. We have even in a quiet day in the office, like today we have maybe 10 languages spoken. Mm. Um, so that it kind of really helps to kind of get, um, that understanding and avoid any missteps that might be easily done if you just look, for example, at raw data. Yeah. And that's again, one of the, the as you said, one of the, the, the potential pitfalls of data is you have to be able to interpret it properly. Yeah. You can't Otherwise, see what you can't you see. Led, <laughs> yeah. You can be led yeah. confidently in the wrong direction, marching yeah. off with <laughs> enthusiasm 
in the wrong way. So that's, that's kind of where right. having that cultural aspect of it is really important. And that's yeah. important for all aspects of SEO. It's not just what the tools are telling you, or definitely not just what Google's telling you. It's about interpretation, testing, measurement, and yeah. yeah. The That's human fun. element, right? The human element is 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 really important, right? It's it's That's people it. that ultimately we're we're talking to and we're selling to. We're not selling to machines and, and websites. So, you know, it's about that understanding, and and it's about obviously sometimes appreciating that you don't have it and you need to go and find it. Um, yeah, and, I mean, that, I, I, you know, and I believe you know that's, that's a big part of your work and as well that, that kind of customer mm -hmm. insight customer understanding and you know making sure that these strategies are aligned to what is um the real motivation of these different audiences um what sometimes i think when people think of the customer and they, they use terms like front of mind mm. well i mean I, I don't know if i've ever had 50 percent of my thoughts be around coca-cola you know, I think I probably have time. actually. If you go, if you go back to the first season of this, you'll probably see me with a coke in my hand every three seconds. <laughs> great advert for those guys. That's, but, that's, uh... that's it. I mean, it's, been, it's been one of these things of being, you know, developing that kind of brand affinity and so on. It's it's you've got you've got to go to the consumer. You've got to go to them and make yeah. them feel something. Um, tap into their emotions and all of that. Yeah, no, um, I'm, I'm I mean, right. Google's I mean, not a bad example of that, but it's, it's where you know, as 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 marketers and SEOs, yeah, you've got to figure out what's motivating the customer. Yeah, your your point's totally valid. My my health concerns aside, um, your point is totally totally valid. Um, so that that's uh, there's some really valuable stuff, Martin. If you had to give sort of one tip on SEO for for this year, looking at things that are changing, I know I'm throwing this at you out of the blue, but what, what do you think that might be? What do you think is an important thing for people to focus on this uh, year? I mean, one thing that's really clear is that Google updates are coming much more regularly than, regularly than they used to. It's not like a big mm -hmm. bang. And it's also not like it's a big bang where you go and fix one thing and you get back in the good books. Yes. Yeah. Like it's this idea of quality, which is a really, you know, weird concept, really. You know, if somebody breaks up with you because you're ugly or you're unkind or mean with money, all of which I am, um, <laughs> you know... You might you might be able to fix that one thing, but if someone says, "Oh yeah, it's just quality," well, you know, how, where do I start with quality? Yeah. Um, exactly. So I think you know, Google just give us some hints. This the, the eat with the extra e, so experience, expertise, authority, yeah. trust. That's really important for any brand and for any international SEO. If that kind of feeds into your plan, then you'll you'll be in good shape because you'll you'll keep the customer first. Um, you still need to back it up with a certain amount of firepower. So, you know, have content that responds to those needs. You can't just hope that they'll come to you. And again, on offsite SEO, there's lots of approaches from digital PR and link earning internationally mm -hmm. to get, you know, for example, if you're trying to rank in France, getting some links from Le Monde in Germany, developed, you know, this, is, this will help you. Yeah. And it's also like an academic citation. You can't really hope to... Um, penetrate a new market if you don't have the the local credibility and part of that credibility is what you, you're putting out there but some of that credibility is also how other people see you so yeah. off-site seo even in sorts of stuff i would argue is a big part of that so make yourself seem part of the landscape and soon enough you will be part of the landscape that, that's ideal i would say that's what a great way to finish, Martin. That's 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 fantastic. Uh, you must have been practicing that one all week. Um, that's fantastic. Um, I asked for one great tip. I think you must have given me five um, at the end there. So that's that's really really great stuff. Um, and stop putting yourself down, Martin. I love chatting to you. It's fantastic. <laughs> Believe in yourself. Um, that's, right, that's, right. that's, my, that's my goal for 2023. There you go. That's it. Eat, eat that pray, one. love. That's, I've got eat, the pray, love. Eat with an extra e. Pray, love. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, look, thanks very much, uh, Martin. It's been an absolute pleasure. There's some great stuff in there for everybody. Um, so if you've uh, got any thoughts on SEO, international SEO, listen to everything Martin's just said, record it, play it back, um, and enjoy. Um, don't forget to like if you got something out of this video today and subscribe to the channel. Um, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode of For the Love of Marketing. Cheers, Martin. Thanks, Simon.